guys, Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health, and joining me right now, I have Chris DeLuca. He is the Global Director of Digital Innovation for Johnson & Johnson Innovation. So welcome, Chris. Thank you, Jessica. Great to be here. All right, great. So I'm really curious about um, something new that you guys have launched. You guys have carved out um, a health tech program within J&J &J Labs, right? Within Johnson & Johnson Innovation. Right. Okay, well, first of all, there's so much carving out here, but why carve out health tech in particular? I mean, well, how is that different to you guys than digital health or digital therapeutics why focus on health technology well uh, thanks so basically it's you know it's a really sort of standing on the shoulders of giants of really the way J&J &J has its deep heritage innovation so it's a 130 year old company um, we are broad, the most broadly based and largest healthcare company on the planet so you know over the past I would say 130 years they've been building innovation programs and you know in the past 20 you could look back and say the sales were only right around $15 billion. So oh, only? Is that only. it? Is that it? <laughs> but, you know, there was a good 20-year run where at an 8% compounding annual growth rate, they managed to bring it to about $75 billion, which is where we are today. Okay. So you say, how did they get to this point? And really, it was credit to the foresight of our leaders to invest in innovation. So we had uh, a substantial $200 billion of our profits went back into innovation, but the most striking number was that half of that went into external innovation. So okay. about $100 billion went into external innovation. So really they uh, thought about how do we sustain the continuous growth over the years and what are the next 20 years going to look like? And so in order to industrialize that sort of external innovation mentality, they built four innovation centers. Uh, we built our uh, J-Labs uh, incubator network around the world and then also combine that with our uh, heritage and corporate venture. So Johnson & Johnson Development Corporation, okay. JGDC, is the oldest corporate venture group in history, making equity investments for over 45 years, now part of this network as well. So we have a really a J&J &J innovation uh, team that looks on the outside of the company, yeah. strategically focused around you know, our major sectors, our pharmaceutical businesses, uh, all the consumer products that you think about from uh, that fill your home, yeah. and then also the medical device businesses. So at J Labs, it's really our incubator network, and we've built out some specific areas that we're now sort of looking to accelerate, and I can talk more about those. Yeah, please do. So is this where this health tech thing fits in? It is, right, it so is. Talk about that, so, I am curious about it. Okay, so J Labs really is, is about offering a big company advantage to uh, small stage companies. Okay. So basically, how can we uh, grow them and pack them around with all of the necessary resources to get them growing faster? So it's essentially a co-working model. We offer shared resources, shared infrastructure. If you're a biotech company, you get a wet lab space. If you're a medical device company, uh, you can have really the latest equipment in medical device prototyping and 3D printing. Um, and if you're a consumer space, we give you you know a dry desk and great coffee and good <laughs> internet connection. But For people, to some, yeah, some people to work with. But really, it's about building this community. And now we've just launched our ninth. Uh, incubator at J Labs, and so we look at not always do these companies neatly fit into you know a pharmaceutical company, and not only do they always fit into this sort yeah. of box. So what about those companies that are health tech, that are you know sort of crossing all of these sectors, that are patient centric? Um, so at J Labs, we look at key programs that we want to accelerate that are of strategic interest that we feel that you know we can support them with the expertise of J&J &J to grow them so I can tell you about yeah, some, give me, some was, of those areas of interest yeah, are, what are, are things. Like, what are an example yeah, then? Okay. So, so really a push you know generally across the company of early detection and disease interception okay. so J&J &J really sees a world without disease as the as the end game so if you think of uh, a way to do that through digital diagnostics uh, and connecting early with the with changing and healthy behaviors um, we look at disease interception as a key area and creating this world without disease. So I would say that's a big push in terms of okay. early detection and early diagnostics of of, uh, of of early interception. What kind of tech are you looking at in that space? I mean, like we're hearing yeah. a lot about like, you know, chatbots in that space. Yeah. We're hearing a lot about like, you know, integrating different, you know, patient reported video kind of stuff. Like what are you looking at in that space? I think it's a very rich uh, sort of all, all, all goes. So right now it's a data science focus. I would say okay. looking at um, number of modalities and digital biomarkers is in okay. real world evidence is a is a key focus. I say also things like voice and how can we look at sort of new modalities of of looking for those sort of signals within things that people are doing in everyday lives that we may be able to early intercept and detect. So those are some examples, and that you know that would spill over into areas of like an example of a company that we have in our J Labs incubator in Toronto uh, called Winterlight Labs. So they are using voice 
as an early detector to predict Alzheimer's disease. Okay. And so that would be a, you know, a really good example of, of the kinds of companies that we're watching and supporting and trying to shape to see how this might fit into a commercial opportunity longer term at J&J. What are some of the trends in healthcare that are shaping your investment strategy and, the, and even choosing the companies that you want to work with? Like, I mean, are you looking at like, I mean, how value-based care is shifting things? Are you looking like what tech trends? I mean, you named a couple of them here are impacting. Give me kind of a big, a big picture look at what's shaping your investment thesis or your thesis for yes. in, ter in terms of like uh, working selecting the companies that you guys are working with. Yeah, I think J&J, &J, you know, really recognizes that we have, you know, 130,000 employees and experts across, you know, a, broad, a really broad network of, of expertise. And so we look at how can we point those expertise at some of the things that our innovation communities are building in sure. our neighborhoods. So some of exam an example of that would be, um, you know, J&J &J partnered up with a company, for example, that was based in Boston called Rest Devices. And Rest Devices uh, is building a sleep digital wearable onesie for infants and, su and supporting uh, their parents and giving mm -hmm. uh, feedback. And so J&J's &J baby division partnered up and we, we basically said, how can we make available all of J&J's clinical pediatric sleep knowledge uh, to, to parents who are trying to get their kids to sleep through the night. And so we, we co-created and built a product which was launched and it's now on the market. So in very quick time, we were able to sort of partner up and put together an AI-driven digital baby sleep coach cool. that's entirely geared towards the parenting type yeah. of that style. So if you're a co-sleeping parent, we adjust the coaching recommendations based on you know, your style. If yeah. you're a cry it out parent, then we'll adjust that and make it very personalized. So using those biometrics and J&J's you know, history and knowledge of that yeah. of that information is is are the kinds of things that we think we have sort of a right to play and a right to maybe win at. So we try to bring an internal strategy first to say where can we actually be effective, uh, and then see if there's a win-win conversation. But we never walk in with sort of a pre-described pre or prescribed sort of a example of what we think things should look at. Sure. It's just to enter into a conversation and see. What is the win-win? But it does look like it does sound like that that your strategic priorities and your areas where you, where you guys have been successful in business are driving where you're looking for innovation. Correct. What other things? I mean, just even broadly, I'm curious. I mean, you guys are doing innovation at such a massive scale, yes. and you've done innovation for such a long time. And innovation is such a hard thing to do, regardless of the size of your organization. If you're a big company or you're a little company, so what would be your advice from you personally? What you've learned as being part of Johnson and Johnson Innovation and in your role there and yes. watching all these other innovators around you. What's your best advice for people doing innovation? Is it aligned to the business, the core business? Is it, you know, be de you know, deliberate in your strategy? Is it keep an open mind? Like, what's your best advice? My advice is uh, make sure you're solving a big problem. So if you're working on something, you know, we, we have a very uh, clear criteria that we, we use as that first cut filter. Sure. Uh, first, we're looking for something that's strategically hooked. So if you're an entrepreneur and you're thinking it's never, well, it's never too early to work with the big company. So that would be my first recommendation. Okay, Start working with someone early, get at the table, understand what that long-term horizon should look like. Um, don't think you have to get to a certain growth point in order to approach a large organization because we have lots of early stage resources. But the second would be, you know, really thinking of, of that really unmet medical need. So maybe make sure you're focused on science, science-driven approaches, okay. uh, making sure you, if you're going to approach a company, uh, you understand their strategy. So don't show up expecting that J and J is going to put you on this magical conveyor belt, and you know off you go into the into this you know and now you're a millions Yay. of people you know <laughs> around the world. So really, it's uh, doing your research. Be prepared and look into what would be the strategic link and how you can bring uh, the organization along in imagining your solution. Uh, in terms of how it links with an organization. I think that's wise to tell a startup, you know, hey, think about what your value proposition is not only to the market that you want to serve, but also right. to your big investor. Your big investor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and advice. especially from a strategic. And I would say other things of, of looking for that transformational opportunity, we, we want to make sure the science is plausible. You know, are you, you know, are you basing your thesis on incredible science-backed information yeah. that has evidence and things that, that, and demonstrating that you have looked at sort of the, uh, business model end-to-end -end and what would be sort of that go-to-market because in this it's not just the technology it's not just even the problem but how are you going to stand on your own two feet and make it to next month's payroll and the one after that and so this is sort of the grind that that we're seeing in in, in many areas so especially health tech making sure you have a solid problem, making sure you can see how the business model is going gonna, is gonna to manifest and then also thinking about you know why you're the best team and explaining 
to solve that problem. So are you actually the rock star team to solve it or, or is it better, more suited to be solved by, by someone else? And so we want to hear all those points. How important to you guys is, like, I guess, the, is the business model about who's going to be paying for whatever the solution is? Because, I mean, I hear from different investors in different parts of the, the right. ecosystem, right? I mean, some of them are like, unless it's bringing me back double digit returns, right. I'm not investing in it. Right. You guys have, I mean, you have a lot of money that you're able to invest in R&D. And I mean, especially as like a, a company that does do pharmaceutical, you know what I mean? You're used to sinking money into R&D. So right. for you guys, I mean, like, what is your input on that as far as the business model is concerned? I think that's sort of the beauty of where we work. We have the coolest jobs in the world because we can come up, come up with really bespoke partnerships. So we don't come in with, you know, sort of this, it needs to have yeah. sort of this return or else we're not looking. We're entirely strategic. So when we say, you know, what is that early step? Maybe the next thing we want to know about you is is just a set of questions. And so we'll partner up with you in our maybe research collaboration and do an R&D partnership okay. to just get to the to next, next level. The next yeah, level. Sure. And then we'll already have pre-planned a number of questions just after that that we'll want to move on to the next stage. Okay. So it's entirely milestone driven. I love that. And so that's really, it's iterative. Uh, it's iterative. Which is like the key really to innovation is, is iteration. But it always needs to be pointing to this longer term sure. commercial mm -hmm. opportunity. We want to make sure that anything that we can partner and support is eventually going to lead to some sort of, you know, box that we put a J&J &J logo on and it's going to serve many people, millions of people around the world. So that's really that that, ho that long term vision, but the near term agility that we offer. Okay, I want you to step outside your little J and J world, but I want you to, you know, you're somebody who's watching innovation. Like I'm a junkie on this stuff. Like I love to read about the space, what's cool, what's new, yes. and I love to talk to people who also really follow the space hardcore. And so I want to ask you what's hot and what's not. So what's what's hot right now for Chris DeLuca in terms of like health tech? What's cool? Yeah, so I mentioned voice already. Yeah. I'm really bullish on voice. I think voice is going to be. Uh, interesting from a variety of modalities, but it's not just one. It's just the newest one. I think yeah. there's so many. Um, it's this year's bio, blockchain. Yeah, high, <laughs> but I would say maybe more so. So for blockchain, I would say is interesting. Yeah. A little further out there for me, and yeah, I think that we can see, we can see some some near term applications. But in terms of today, right now, mm -hmm. when I look across the digital health landscape, yep. what are some of the big problems? I see engagement not generating. You know, it's not that they don't have enough evidence or they have enough data behind it, but people are sort of burned out with apps. There's app fatigue in the marketplace. So how do we think of new modalities and new ways of engaging that sort of fit into in line with people's lifestyles? I think voice is a very natural way to yeah. engage and that will you know, inherently build better data sets and more engagement. I think you know, even across the board, we're seeing different ways of, of engaging around the analytics and predictive analytics side. So from a large organization, we think you know, everything needs to be measurable and, and data driven. Yeah. So how can we access large bodies of data to train these AI models that will then lead to better experiences and detection and, and intervention. So I, I would say data, voice, yeah. ways that are going to generate data, ways that will you know, sort of engage people around their health and, and making sure that we're always you know, moving up the chain in terms of things that we know are evidence-based. All right, what's not hot? What what's are you not, not interested anymore? What's Where not are hot? you not hot? I'm, I'm interested in everything right now. Oh my now. God, that's not true. <laughs> Come on. I'll, here, I'll give, you, I'll, give, I'll, I'll give you an example of one of the things that I've been hearing that's not hot. And you can, maybe hot? you can add to it or, or agree or whatever. But what's not hot this year has been the One Trick Pony digital health apps. So like the one app that does like one thing for a very tiny specific niche patient population, nobody is looking at investing at those anymore. Whereas three years ago, those were pretty hot. So and like now they're like becoming like that whole market is kind of flattening and things are becoming platforms that do multiple things I, and take on multiple yeah. disease conditions. So that would be, that's one over and over again I keep hearing. Yeah. So why don't you add to that? I'll add, I'll <laughs> I'll add, add something to I'll that, Chris. Add, I'll <laughs> add, but I'll also um, go in the other direction and okay. say, if you are solving a problem, you know, I saw we had... For example, a number of companies that come across my plate recently, I see some great smoking cessation uh, applications out there and apps that are you know, entirely focused on just that problem alone. Yeah. Lung cancer is the biggest killer of cancer on the planet. So if you and lung cancer comes from smoking. This is you know right. we yeah, know this. If you can stop smoking through your smoking cessation app program, sign me up. Okay. So. So if it's a big enough problem. It's a big enough problem. So I, I think that's that's where we really need to be focused entirely on how big is the problem. Okay. So if you so, so what's, what's not, not hot, hot then? Solutions looking for problems. You know <laughs> that's that is not hot. No, but that's true. <laughs> and there are a lot of solutions out there that are looking for problems. That is problems. that is not hot. I don't want to talk about solutions that don't 
have a very specific unmet medical need that we're looking after. So. All right, I'll let you off the hook on that because that actually ended up being one. a very good answer, Thank Chris. You. you lucked out on that. <laughs> we all lucked out. Well, I, yeah, we really did. I helped you big time. <laughs> you owe me. I do owe you. <laughs> it, it was invite so great. Back. I will invite okay. you back. You're going to have a great answer to that Thank next you. time. You're going to have a list, a top 10 list of what's not hot. Exactly. I expect that. All right. <laughs> all right, Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Always so insightful to talk to somebody who's looking at innovation at the, at the scale that you're looking my at pleasure. it. My pleasure. Thanks so much for Oh, my gosh. Me. Thank you. I'm Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. Thanks so much for joining us.